Imagine you're sitting in a classroom and you're listening to a presentation, but you're not really listening. You don't even know what the presentation is about because you don't care. And the guy that is talking speaks in the most monotone way that you have ever heard. And while you are sitting there, bored, staring in the distance, you think by yourself, would it be socially acceptable if I just throw myself out of the window? But two weeks later, you have to give your own presentation and you make exactly the same mistakes as that guy made before you. And that is what happens in 99% of the presentations and speeches that we give. They're just utterly, utterly, utterly boring and no one wants to hear them. And that's why this video is not a psychology video. Today I am going to tell you guys how to give a kick-ass presentation. Welcome to Brains Applied. Presentations and speeches are boring because our brain needs stimulation to keep itself entertained. And if you've already seen my video about concentration, you might know where I'm heading. The Yerkes Dodson Law. The Yerkes Dodson Law states that when our brain gets too many stimuli, we can't focus. For example, you are probably not able to study in a really crowded area where a lot of people are making noise. On the other hand, when our brain gets too little stimuli, it gets bored and distracted. And that is why your job as a presenter is to make it fun. And this brings us to tip number one. Use your body and intonation. You might have heard this tip before and it's quite easy to do. During your presentation, you should just change the way that you are speaking. For example, sometimes you talk fast, sometimes you talk slow, sometimes you speak loud and aggressively, and sometimes you talk really, really soft. And sometimes you have a high pitch, and sometimes you have a low pitch. Here's a good example of a guy using his intonation. On one occasion was asked by a lawyer to sum up the essence of the teachings of Moses. And, 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 and he went back and reached back into the Hebrew scriptures to Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. And after you've seen that, here's an example of a guy having pretty bad intonation. Great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. Is anyone out there still wondering why black people are still going to church? It's just way more fun to look at. And while you're at it, do exactly the opposite from what I am doing right here, right now. I am standing in front of a camera and that means that I have to stand here on the square meter and that I have to look right into the lens. But when you guys are doing a presentation, you are a performer and you have your stage. So use it, walk around and look every single member of your audience in the eyes. And of course, don't forget to use those arms. You have arms, God gave them for you for some reason. Use them, use gestures, use expression. Tip number two, make it fun. This is a golden rule. As long as you are having fun telling your story, so will your audience. And I do realize that you can't always be a comedian in front of the CEO of your company, but when you're just presenting at school or for friends, you can just crack a joke. You can even insert memes into your presentation, as long as it's appropriate, of course. And speaking of memes, use visuals. Visuals can say so much more than text can do. It's an easy way to illustrate your ID. For example, my graph of the Yerkes Dodson law was an easy way to tell you guys how our concentration works. 
Visuals can say so much more and can convey so much more emotions than text can do. And they attract more attention. And that is of course always a good thing when you're doing a presentation. If you really know your presentation by heart, I would even advise you to use the Pecha Kucha rules. When you are using the Pecha Kucha presentation style, you only use visuals and images in your presentation. And to keep up the pace, you set an automated timer to let the slides continue every 20 seconds. Tip number 3 is to tell a story. Tell people why they should listen. I started this video by telling you guys why you should watch this video. Because you need to give a damn good presentation. No one likes it boring. And it's not going to give you a raise or better grades. The power of having a good story comes from its ability to make a good argument without facing any resistance. When you're telling people a story, you build up a certain tension and this tension does two things. It catches their attention and it creates a bond between the character and your audience. It lets the audience feel the emotions of the characters in your story. And that is why you feel so sad after watching Titanic and why you feel so badass after watching James Bond. When people are sharing emotions, we release oxytocin. Oxytocin is a trust hormone and it's very important for human bonding. And that is exactly why you should do storytelling. It creates trust between you and your audience. So tell people why your company got founded, how it got founded, based on what values and tell them why you are doing what you are doing. Storytelling is the way to build relationships. Tip number four is interact with your audience. As you might know yourself, concentration decreases over time and that's why it's important to interact with your audience. As you are interacting with your audience, you will turn them from passive listeners into active participants in your presentation. And because they are more active, they will pay more attention. And you can do this in several different ways. You can start your presentation by telling them that you want their interaction. By telling them that you want to hear their questions and their opinions. Tell them that they should not be shy to share and to speak up. You can also start your presentation with a controversial statement. A statement that makes them debate and argue before you start your own presentation. You can also point out individuals in the audience and just ask them for their opinion. For example, you can ask Mary, how do you think that Hollywood handled the Me Too events? And in case you're afraid that people won't be willing to participate in a debate, you can also turn your question into a multiple choice question. In that case, you just show the possible answers on a slide and you let people raise their hand. It's an easy way to start and it allows you to engage your entire audience. Last but not least, and I cannot believe that I have to say this, practice. During my time at high school and at university, I met so many people who just made their presentation, but who never practiced it. And that's really bad, because if you just go through it once, you will never ever ever remember it the day after. This is the Ebbinghaus Forgetting Curve. The Ebbinghaus Forgetting Curve shows us how much we forget over time and how much practicing and repeating things makes us remember more. How do you even expect that people are going to pay attention to your presentation when you don't even know what you're going to say yourself? How do you even expect that people would think your presentation is entertaining when you are just reading your text from a paper? And that is why you should practice, 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 practice. By the way, here's a quick bonus tip. Don't put entire text blocks in your PowerPoint presentation. Because when you do so, people will try to read them and they won't pay attention to you anymore. And that is all I wanted to tell you today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, press the like button. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you receive a 100% free notification next time when I upload a new video. And I 
we'll see you guys later.